So after I finished welding the billet yesterday, I've gone ahead and I've pockmarked it with a 13mm drill bit. Um, that's going to help develop a bit of a pattern I hope. I haven't done it this way before myself. Usually I do like a ladder pattern. Um, so I'm going to leave the bottom piece attached to the work rod. I'm going to forge down a piece of 50mm ADCRV2 so it fits in the 40mm wide Damascus billet and then I'll weld the end of this billet back on top with all the pock marks to the outside. That's very important. If I mess that up, I'll be unimpressed with myself. Um, I've got about 200 millimeters of usable material there. I don't use the end or the front of the billet because that's just where it's most likely to have uh, galls and cold shuts and just miserable things going on. So here's just a bit of the mathematics you can use for working out the size of a piece that you need. Um, and it will tell you how much of the original parent stock to use. Normally I just do this by eye, but I thought for the sake of the video I'll try and cover it. So this here is the size of the piece I want to end up with. I want to end up with something 100 millimeters long by about 6 mil thick by 40 millimeters wide. And that's to match the Damascus billet that I made yesterday. So volume is length by width by depth. So that gives me 24,000 cubic millimeters because it's all been done in millimeters. Um, so that's the volume of the piece I want to end up with. Um, then to account for scale loss, I've multiplied it by 1.05, 5% kind of per forging, because it's going to be done pretty hot. And there'll be some scale on the steel to begin with, which gives me an overall volume of the piece I want to use of 26,460 millimeters cubed. So to work that backwards, I then divide the volume by the thickness and the width of the uh, stock that I'm going to be using. That'll tell me the length of it that I need to cut, which gives me 83.34 millimeters of stock that I need to use. Um, normally I wouldn't try and be that accurate, I thought it would just be an interesting thing to throw into the video. There's my 83 millimeters. out to be at around 30 psi with the uh, inspirator rolled out as far as it is currently. Okay, so we forged out our piece of core steel. It matches up really nicely. So the next job is going to be to cut across the center of that bar and then I'll clean up the internal surfaces. This time I will just have to use the grinder and then reforge weld it all together, draw it out and begin to form the knife. Okay, so now I've got all the pieces uh, cleaned up. I've done both sides of the core piece. It will sit here and then top layer there like that and I'll just weld those together and get the forge ready to do another lot of ramp, uh, welding. So even after doing my welding, the billet was fairly warm so I thought I'd just try and put a little bit of the uh, borax on there and you can see that it's swollen up, there's a little bit of bubbling just there. Um, just I know these two sections on the outside aren't wanting to sit extremely flat. So I clamped them together, I welded them as best I could, so I'm going to try and get the borax in there as soon as possible. Okay, so we're doing our preheating. Just get a nice bit of borax on there. See the borax has a glassy surface now as the billet's coming up to temperature. Okay, so it's probably 
as close as I get with my camera, but the borax is starting to bubble profusely in a couple of spots on the right hand side. You can see that it's a good indication that's uh, coming up to temperature. So you want it like that everywhere that you've got the borax. but apparently 